recording. What did we learn yesterday? What sunk in? What didn't sink in? What did we do? We we got the edit button working. Got the edit button working. What did that entail? A lot. Using um, the params, setting the params in with the ID to the with the request. Yep. So we started by saying, "Hey, that post editor that that's a uh, pretty on on track for what we want to do, right? We made it for a new post. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just reuse that code?" So we started by linking the edit button, but the edit button is, is needs to tell the post editor what post to edit. So after we passed in that as part of the routing and updated the routing, what did we have to do on the edit page in order to get all of that working? The pet, was that when we did the patch? We did, before the patch, we had to do something else. Patch was the step after that. It was a fetch of some sort. So we click the edit button, we get the routing updated, we go we to the to, post editor, passes in the ID. What did we do after that? We had to get all the posts. Yeah, we had to get the posts in order to be able to know what to edit, right? So we did a quick get request to the database and we said, hey, this user wants to edit post ID, you know, two or six or whatever ID it was let's load in the content into the form so that when they're editing the form, they have the content that they're actually editing. And then we did go ahead, Christy, on the patch. What did we have to do to make the patch work? I don't know. I just remember we did a patch. <laughs> so we had to do not only the patch on the front end where we said, hey, if they're posting a new post, go ahead and, and use the, the um, method we already have. But if they're editing an existing post based off the ID, do a patch to the database instead. But in order for that patch to work, we had to create a new endpoint. We created a new endpoint that flowed through SQLize. Then we take them back to the page and all of a sudden that patch showed up. So today we are going to dive into author pages and getting it so that we have two different user accounts and can view posts by author. After the break, we are then going to dive into creating a React project from scratch, something that you guys are hopefully getting experience on and have done on your capstones. But we're also going to do a routing review, right? How do we set up a basic nav bar? How do we pull some code in from Bootstrap? Why do we set up our routing that way? What is the process of creating a new page, hopefully emulating that capstone experience? And then we will go from there. Tomorrow, we're going to dive into some JavaScript syntax, syntax basics. Uh, we're going to review some of that. Um, but as always, I am hoping to stop at 8 o'clock tonight and open it up for capstone questions. With that said, anything yesterday that we did that you didn't quite get, anything that you are requesting that we recover, not necessarily tonight, but sometime this week, a refresher, anything that you're running into in your capstones, uh, any light bulb moments that you had that you're proud of, any light bulb moments that you've identified that you know you're missing and need additional practice on. Uh, I have, I have a, a question that I already asked, but I can't remember. Um, <laughs> and so yesterday, remember I told you I couldn't, I couldn't, um, copy my thing over so I, so today i've been doing all the things that you said yesterday but it's not working again so i'm doing something wrong and i probably need to write it down so so would... starting from any any file sometimes it's easier to use your keyboard than it is to use drag and drop right so okay. what i would do is copy the folder so we copied the week 18 day four folder by hitting command c we then went into week 19 and hit command v to paste the folder i've been doing that while you've been talking and it won't work go ahead share the screen
Uh, right here, so I've been doing. Okay, so you can't do that from the open dialog. You need to be doing it from Finder. Oh, from my C3, that's why. Oh. All right, so that was my fault. Okay, I got it now. <laughs> I'll be able to figure it out. Good one reminder for everyone. One more question. Yep. So, uh, and this probably could go at the end, but when you go into like something, say like we created something and you want to go into it on your own, mm -hmm. what do you need to do so that you can like bring it back up? Like, it, it, I thought you just had to do NPM run start. So it depends on the project, right? So okay. as we got more advanced, as we started getting into the server and React, npm run start, definitely the right command because we had to start the server, right? Mm -hmm. But for something like a basic front-end project where there is no server, you just want to open index.html, all you need to do is double-click on index.html, and that's what's going to link to your script file and your CSS and pull it all open in the browser. Or you can open the project in VS Code and start the live server uh, down in the bottom right, and that will pull up the project as well. So specifically, I tried to go into the chat app and I tried to send, to send a chat through another chat. Um, and, and, it, and it had a bunch of objects. It just had object, object, object. So then I was like, so maybe I need to do something else. I did npm install, and then I did MP, npx react add. I was doing a bunch of stuff, and then, it's, then it said do an npm audit. It was just doing a whole bunch of stuff, and I was like, okay, now it's time to back out. So. so I would draw the line at whenever someone tells you to run a command that you do not understand, warning light should go off, and you should stop and say, all right, it's time to shoot max a slack or schedule a one-on-one -on -one or ask during class. So the thing that you have to do is say, was this working before? And if it was working before, then it's something where you say, all right, it should just be an install and a run start. And if it's not that, I'm missing a step somewhere, something's going wrong. If I would it, say MPX for some reason, but maybe MPX not. we only use for create React app, create React app and for node mod. Right, those are the only two commands that are in the node world where we use npx to to get those commands to run. Um, however, if you're running into issues and you're like, I know this was working before, then that's time to reach out and ask for help. Right. Um, however, if it's something where maybe you left it in a state where you thought it was done and it actually wasn't then it's a, a matter of going in and debugging and saying, OK, well, why is my front end getting object object? Maybe I need to add a console log in there to figure out what object object is. Um, I spent, uh, I, I got a message from my uh, dev at work today, a dev on my team, and he said, I need a new computer. I thought, mm -hmm. oh, God, why? And he goes, you told me at 11 a.m. that it was going to be an object object problem. I spent five hours debugging today and it ended up being a single line fix. It was object object was coming out because I was not using the key inside the object. So it is something that that devs of all levels of experience run into. And that skill of debugging is something that maybe you'll see a little bit of a little bit more of tonight because we're going off the beaten track for once. I don't have this code pre-written and that was intentional. So when we're setting up this author's page, you're going to see the step-by-step -step flow of how I go about this, how I go about identifying what needs to be done and breaking down those steps and documenting them in a way so that if you guys had to do that, you would be able to identify that, right? That's one of the downsides of these projects is oftentimes the people teaching you the project have done the project from start to finish. And then you're like, okay, I understand each individual step, but how would I go about identifying those steps and knowing that I have to do that? So tonight, I'm not giving you any steps. I'm telling you what I want to be able to do, and you guys as a class need to work through those steps to figure out how to do them, 
and then I'll show you how to do the steps. But tonight, we're not going through any of the steps that I figured out. You guys need to figure out the steps once I give you the requirement of what it's supposed to do. Hmm. Sounds fun. Please try to contain scary. all of your excitement. Let's say, sounds scary. <laughs> Sometimes think, scary is good. I think it's scary and fun at the same time. It gives us some chance to know, figure out what we know, what we don't know, and what we can find out. So I, I think that's cool. Absolutely. There's only so much off the rails <laughs> we can go, right? Yeah, because I figure I don't know nothing anyway. So. <laughs> uh. All of that said, any other comments, stand-up comments, light bulb moments, light bulb moments that you felt flickering but didn't actually happen? Routes, I hear you, Nicole. We will go over routes for uh, React. Uh, probably the second half of class, we're going to fire up a new React app and revisit that topic uh, entirely. Oh, I was saying, no, that was the only light bulb moment is when you showed that one. I was like, oh, so, yeah. Beautiful. Your light bulb moment there is what inspired me to make sure the rest of the class is having that light bulb moment. Um, so we are going to revisit pretty much exactly your project setup and get the outlet working, get a header and footer working, get a nav bar working. We're going to touch a little bit on bootstrap because I know that that's something that you've seen me use, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to use it in a practical manner and pull it into bootstrap. So we're going to revisit all of those topics. And if we run out of time tonight, we'll revisit that tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, well, and oh, go ahead, Nicole. I was going to say, so um, you said we are starting a, a new React app? Not yet. We're going to finish up blog project for the author. And then later in the, in the evening, we will do a new React app. Um, what is it on? Is it going to be like another class thing or would I be able to do like work on my capstone? Wow. No, that. you can totally do work on your capstone. Um, no homework assignment on this, so you don't need to turn anything in. Um, but we're, we're just going to create a project called routing and we're going to set up a project that has a header, a footer, and maybe an about page and like a home page. Um, and we're just going to go over basic routing and making sure that those React concepts are syncing in. Maybe a login page, maybe we'll set that up as well. Max, you know what I would like to visit? Um, getting information from an API into your database. Ooh, OK. Um, I can't promise that tonight, but I can come up with something for either tomorrow or Thursday for that. Okay, thank you. Maybe we will revisit the weather app. Oh, I need some time to think about that, but I can come up with a project for that. That's a uh, very good request. Thank you. Anything else? anything comes up and you are too afraid to ask me directly, you can always shoot a message to Karen or shoot me a DM in Slack and we can find a way to incorporate that. Um, no need to no need to associate the request with who's requesting it. At this point, it goes all the way back to the beginning of the boot camp, right? So if you're like, I never got image tags in HTML, could you just go back and, and review that? Or I never understood CSS syntax. If you could just do another review on that, uh, we can find a way to incorporate that in. I know JavaScript syntax is something that a lot of the class has been struggling with. So we're going to touch on that tomorrow. Um, we will do uh, a little practice with a SQLize project for how do we make an API call and actually have data from someone else's AP API copy into our database. Um, that's the general notion of either scraping or some notion of data exists, how do I store it? Um, so we'll touch on that. That's based off of Larry's request uh, either tomorrow or Thursday. But today is all about wrapping up, getting authors working in our blog, um, and then also getting into uh, how do we do React project setup, get the routing working, basic project layout in the front end, all of that good stuff. 
Any other comments before we dive in tonight? We will be doing a capstone review on Monday, very similar to the capstone uh, progress report that we did last Monday. What did you get done? Uh, what are you working on now? Do you have any roadblocks, any um, concepts that you would like to review? We will be getting into that next Monday, giving you guys plenty of time so you don't have to panic. Um, and we will also have Latonia come in next Monday as a guest speaker. So probably not a ton of new class concepts to cover on Monday, but hopefully uh, Latonia has a uh, invigorating uh, uh, presentation to show you what life looks like after graduation. And then we roll right into the capstone of getting us uh, up to that graduation point. We ready to dive in for tonight? Yep. Cool. All right. Let me get you guys situated here so I can still see you. All right. I am going to my CIC C3 my code. I'm going into week 19. I am doing a, oh, I don't mean to do a compress. I'm going to duplicate it because we are using all of the day one code in day two. While that's going through, let me just delete node modules in there that will make everything go faster. Again, a reminder, node modules is the uh, output of our NPM install. So if we do an NPM install, what it's doing is it's using our package.json file to install every package that we have installed in there. However, that can definitely slow things down and make the cloud go wonky. So whenever you are sending your project to someone else, Oftentimes, it is a good idea to not include your node modules folder because it is much quicker for them to run npm install and uh, regenerate the node modules folder than it is to send them the folder with everything in it. So I am going to take my day two folder. I'm going inside of that. I am opening up my back end and my front end. The goal for today's class is to finally let this code rest and wrap this up so we feel like we are done with it. Um, so I'm going to my package.json. I did send this as a zip if you would like to use my code instead of your own code. I am opening a terminal in both the front end and the back end. I'm going to run my npm i. As soon as I run my npm i, you see my node modules folder reappears that has thousands and thousands of files inside of these folders. And that is why the cloud does not like to sync it and why it is not easy to duplicate or send our projects. Don't be afraid to delete your node modules because everything that is installed is in this package.json file. So at this point, now you can start exploring a little bit more, right? Getting out of what we actually did in class and going to that next level of understanding of what is NPI actually doing? How does NPM run start work? All of those kinds of things. So after I do my NPM I, I'm going to NPM run start. That gets my back end going. I'm going to my front end. I am going to NPM I on my front end. That is going to install all of my React dependencies. I'm going to NPM run start on there. That should pop open my blog with my two different posts that I have already created in the database. I am going to start a live share. We don't need to sign into the admin for once, or at least not yet. That is now in the Zoom chat and in the uh, live stream channel in Slack. I'm gonna pop open my home page. I'm going to pop open my server JS file, so I'm set up in those. 
and you are caught up when you can see your blog homepage. Launching a poll there. Come on twice so you can do Yeah. You broke up there, Nicole. Can you repeat that? Go ahead and vote in the poll when you're all set up so I know when we can roll forward. You are all caught up just when this launches in here. And you can confirm your posts are showing up. These posts are flowing through the back end. Are these posts are stored in the database? Our get request is actually working, pulling that content in from the database straight to the front end. If you are having an error in your back end, a good reminder to check your db.js folder, especially if you took the code from me and change your username from hack upstate to your own computer's username. Six votes in on the poll. Let's shoot for eight or nine tonight. You know, we spend a lot of time in class just getting these windows open, but this is actually a part of day-to-day -day development life, right? Every day that I sign on to my computer in the morning, I pull up my projects. I think I had five windows open today at work, um, and I was working on merge requests. A merge request or a pull request is when one of the developers on my team says, hey, I have this code ready. I would like you to review the code before it goes into production, right? So they kind of work in what is called a branch on Git. And when they think that branch is ready, they open a pool or merge request um, and tag me as a reviewer. I go through their code. I review their code line by line. I then switch over to uh, their branch on my computer and I test their code and I make sure their code is all working. And then I go through and I click the merge button in GitHub or GitLab or, or Bitbucket, whatever um, Git host you are using. Um, and that merges the code in. And then that code goes out to what we call our production server, right? So that's when it makes the jump from the local development server that we're using on our computer into the production server that our users use. Um, and that is all coming your way, coming soon. Uh, with Nathan coming in, I believe, August 15th. Okay, nine votes in. We are should be good to keep going here. Any questions before we do? Okay, so... Let's talk through this together. We're going to go into kind of brainstorming mode here. When we see our posts, we know these posts are made by just me. And we know these posts are made by just me because if we look in our VS code, all the way down at the bottom in our backend code, we said create first user. But what I would like to do is make it so up here at the top, instead of just having a login button at the bottom here, I would like all of the author users to show up at the top of this page. And then when I click on any one of their usernames, I would like to be able to see the posts that just those users wrote. So that seems like a pretty normal user request, right? 
hey, here's a new feature I want to add to my site. Max's awesome blog is awesome, but wouldn't it be cool if I could have a second author who could write a post and can and could contribute to the site? So not only do I want them to be able to write their own posts, I want the ability to filter my posts on the homepage to be able to show just the posts that they made. Okay, pretty, pretty normal request seems to make sense. Do we have any questions before we start thinking about the code? Do we have any questions about how the feature should work itself? This is often the hardest part of working on user requests and adding features to software is understanding what the user is asking for. It isn't actually getting it to work. It's understanding what the user is asking for. So basically, basically you just want to see all of the posts from that specific author when you click on their name. You got it. All right. And oftentimes, re-communicating back what the user is requesting in your own words is the best way to bridge that communication gap and make sure that you're at that level of understanding. Uh, Christy, the page you should be on is just localhost 3000. If you have anything in your URL bar after it, you can just delete it and that should take you back to the home page here. Then it's blank. Okay, so what you need to do is check your routing. So if you're in VS Code, start at the top and work your way down. If you start at app.js, what you need to do is make sure that you have a route for that homepage, that empty path essentially just with the slash and that you've got the home component there. Mm -hmm. And if you've got all of that, check your home component and make sure you've got all of the code in here. So. This is not only doing a use effect call to the posts to make sure that we're getting all of the post content in. It also has a map down here that goes over each post to make sure the post is showing up. Mm. If you're missing any code in there, go look at my code and catch up there or abandon ship and go to the live stream channel in Slack and just pull that zip it. So I have the same code as you, but I'm not line 21. My style is behind the card is not at the front where it says margin top 10. So I just need to move it maybe. That probably wouldn't be causing your problem. You probably have a problem somewhere else. If you're missing the style tag, that would just be the spacing between each individual card. That wouldn't cause the whole thing to go blank. Mm. So look in your browser console and see if you have any errors. If you have any errors in there, that's going to tell you if there's a problem with the front end. I, have, I already have the same errors you have which is we'll uh, look in your front end browser console so inclusive. go to the console here and see if you have any errors in here uh, so, um, objects are not valid as a react child okay so that means you definitely have a problem with some of your code in home.js. If you are meant to render a collection of children used an array instead. Yeah, so you've got something going on with your posts array map or you're setting the data incorrect incorrectly here. If you can't find it, let me know. 
it might be easier just to copy and paste my home.js into your home.js and see if that, that fixes the problem. That code looks to me, except for that one line, 21. Go ahead, you... share the screen. Let's take a quick look before we dive in. Okay, where are you? Share screen. Am I on the right screen? No. Uh, yeah, you're, you are. Let me, uh, remote control mm -hmm. here, take a quick look. Yeah. See right there on 21, how the style is up on that line and not. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it keeps, I fixed it before and it keeps doing it. Oh, that's because you're missing a div here. Oh, yeah, that will help. And now we are missing a closing div probably down here. And that should fix all of your problems. And if we go back to Chrome, there's your card content. Okay, thank you. And one last thing, because that's going to drive me crazy. If you notice everything is still centered in your blog and you're like, I don't want it centered. I want it over on the left-hand side. If you go to your app.css, you can go ahead and delete all of the stuff in here. This is what makes, this is what the app creates uh, when it's first set up, when we do the Create React app. Mm -hmm. So if we save that and go back, now you're back on the left-hand side. You should be looking just like mine. Thank you. Anyone else have questions? Okay. So we understand the future. We understand that we need to get all the author names to show up on the homepage. And we understand that when we click on one of them, we want that page to only show that author's posts. Where would we start getting that feature to work? We need a link. We'll need a link with all the different users showing up, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start there. Where, 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 what file would we start at? to make a link show up with all the author's names. Can't you do it in the home? We can do it in home. And so where where do we go about doing that? Looks like under the H1. Under the H1 the is, Max, Max, uh, awesome. okay. Yeah. So I'm here, what do I do? Add uh, the name. The link tag. And then two. Wait, wait. Would you just duplicate it? Would you just duplicate from the di that div to the bottom div? Just redo it. This one down here. Well, from like seventeen down to within the div. So from like seventeen down to thirty-three. Would you just redo that? I want everyone's posts to show up when they visit the homepage. But if they want to see just a specific author, they can click on their name and get to see only that. But wouldn't that put each author on a different card so that one person would be on that card and then the next person would be on another card? So I could make the author's name show up on every card. But what I would like to do is be able to click on their name and only see the posts from that. Do you right, need to get a list of authors first? Oh, there's an idea. Well, yeah, we can add each individual link here, but how do we know who the authors are? We want to identify the author by their name. So before we can make a link with all the authors showing up, wouldn't it be nice if when I created a new author, their name automatically showed up here? So before I can go in and make that link show up, which Larry, you're not wrong, we're gonna comment this out because we're coming back to this link. What we need to do is when the page loads, not only do we need to get all of the posts, we also need to 
get all of the authors. Oh. And before we get the authors, we need to set up an async function call get authors. Now, where are those authors going to be stored in the front end? Mm -hmm. Where do the authors get stored in the front end? In a new state. In a new state. So we're yeah. going to say const authors set authors is going to use state, and we're going to store all of the authors in an empty array. OK, now we've got that set up. And we know, hey, when the page loads, we want to not only get all the posts, we want to get all the authors. So in order to get all the authors, where are the authors going to get stored permanently? They need to be in the database. They need to be in the database. How do we get to the database? to make an API call, right? So we're going to say const respond equals await a fetch to the API URL. And we want to get all of the authors. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to get the data out from that response. And once we have, we are going to set the authors to the data.authors. So I save, I make sure my API URL is actually in the correct casing. I go back to my browser, I look in my console and I get an 404, authors not found. All right, we well, haven't created that uh, route yet. Yep, so we go to the back end, and above our server.listen, we're gonna say server.get our authors, that's an async rec res. We're going to res.send back, res.send back our authors. And how do we get our authors? Uh, are we using like, um, going to be from the request, right? Um, I don't know. Are we using like the ID for the authors or? We want to get all the authors. We don't care what their ID is. Oh, find all by and get. No. Yep, yep. You're all on the right track. What are we going to do a find all on? The in order to post something as an author, as a blog post author, what do you need to be in our system? Oh, user. A user. A user. Yeah. user. <laughs> so we're going to go find all um... the users. Okay, now let's just console log out our authors here. So we're going to add a console log data.authors. We're going to come over to our front end. I'm going to refresh. And now I see my author. It's only one of them. It's in an array. But does anyone see a problem? Yeah. Oh, there is your um, your password. And stuff oh shit! Like There's my password. It's encrypted, yeah. but I shouldn't be sending that back to the front end. Uh -uh. We need to find a way to not send back the password. We want to send back the username and the ID and create a that I don't really care about. But the password, we shouldn't be sending back an encrypted password to the front end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to SQLize. And we're going to go to the getting started, and we're going to look at the modeling querying finders, right? Because maybe it's in basics, maybe it's somewhere else, but we're finding the information. So I'm guessing the documentation of how we only send back, how we only query the database for certain fields is going to be in there. So here's our find all. That's what we're using. Uh, there's a where clause in there. There's find by PK. Here's all of this good stuff. All right, I was wrong. It didn't have anything in it that I wanted. Let's look in the basics. Insert, select, so specifying attributes from select queries. Okay, the attributes are in here, and it's saying attributes can uh, be renamed. 
and we can do aggregations. But the basic idea here is we're limiting back what information we get we get from the, the database. So I'm going to go to my VS Code and I'm going to try this. In my back end, instead of finding all, I'm going to say, hey, I want to find where the fields are the ID and the username. So I save that. I go back to my Chrome. I look in my front end. I refresh. And now when I pop this open, it doesn't work at all. And I still get all the information back that I want. OK, let's go back to the front end. Let's look at our code. And I said fields instead of attributes. The documentation said attributes. I should have used attributes. I refresh. Now when I pop this open, it's going to make a liar out of me for the second time. User find all attributes. Attributes as an array. Where operators, not advanced queries. We creating in bulk, ordering, grouping, limiting, count. All right, I thought that was going to work. Mm. I told you guys I didn't prepare this. We are doing it on the fly. We're figuring it to get out together. To select only some attributes, you can use the attribute option. Attributes can be renamed and you can do aggregations, but we're not trying to do anything fancy there. Ah, look where I put my attributes. I did that in my create first user function. That's not where I meant to do it. I meant to do it in my find all. So I, I mistakenly put this down in my create first user. That's not where I wanted to limit the attributes back. Where I wanted to limit the attributes back is when we got the authors. So if I save that. I come back over here. I refresh. I pop this open. Now look at the only data coming back. It's just my ID and my username. OK, that's what I wanted. OK, it's good. Got our author showing up there. We're going to go back to our code. What is the next step? Because now we've got our authors and we know what the basic data structure is because we console logged it out. So now that we've got our authors and that we've set it into the state, what do we do next? Do we have to put use state at the top or are we did that already? Never mind. We, yep. We've got our use state, we're using our state, we're setting it into authors. Now that we've got it in the state, what do we want to do? You're muted, Larry. Go back to the front end. We're back in the front end. We're here now. How do we get our authors showing up from our state? We're back in. Are we on the home page? We are on the home page. Back down to the links. Back down to the links. But before we oh, use yeah, this link, what do we want to do with that link? What do we want to do with each author? How do we deal with each individual author? Map. We yeah. map over them. So we say, hey, for each of the authors, the React can't handle all of the authors all at once. We need to tell React how to handle each individual author. So what we're going to do is map over them. Go over each author. And as we get access to each individual author, return out a link. OK, now what do we want that link to say? Their name. Their name. So we go to the author. How do we get their name to show up? Author dot, is it username? 
Well, one way to find out is we can comment this out and just console.log out the author. So we can get access to what that author looks like. Now we see there is an ID and a username. So that's how we can use it to say, hey, link to the author dot username. So I save that, I come back to my Chrome, I refresh, and now I get an error. So we don't have to go to the route first? Well, we haven't linked to the route yet. So we don't need to create the, re the route yet, but we're close to needing to do that. Um, so now we get cannot read properties of undefined reading path name. It does need, Larry, you were right. It does need a two in here. What are we going to route to? Slash authors. That it? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna save, come back over here. Now, my username shows up here, but we get an error in the console, each child in a list. Okay, well, the child is each individual list item, each individual link we put here. So whenever we use a map, whatever the top level returned component is, we also need to add a key so React can keep track of what item in the list this is. What would be a good key to use that would be unique? Their ID. So we add an author ID, we refresh here, we are now back to no errors. Okay. What do we do next? Mm -hmm. Hold on, let's, let's pause here. Let's make sure everyone is caught up. At this point, you should in your, your code have the, your username showing up or my username <laughs> showing up here. To recap the steps, what we did is we, in our use effect, we added this new function called get authors. We then had to switch to our backend code and create a get authors. Then we realized, hey, our authors are sending back the, the author's password. We don't want to do that. So we use this attributes field right here to say only send back their ID and their username. Once we get all of that working, we come back to our front end, set it into the state. And once it's set into the state, we use a dot map to link, to loop over each individual author and to show a link for that author's name. So let's stop here, let's poll, let's make sure everyone's following along who wants to be following along. And if you have questions, let me know. No poll showed up for me, but you could just do no, but keep going. Okay, noted. You thought I was going to get away with Roadrunner speed all night, didn't you? I am. I'm just talking away. <laughs> Can you tell me why we used that? 
six and then the slash authors here or up here well now that i because it's giving me import vibes but you know what we did it in post too so i don't know this first this this last one where we did the link to so i did back ticks here because i thought we may need to actually put in a value a variable there but we okay. haven't needed it yet so this is probably a bad example of back ticks this okay. is a much better example of back ticks right where we don't actually want the word API URL to be run in our code. What we want to go in there is the localhost 3001, right? Okay. So we use the back ticks to say, hey, now I can use this dollar sign curly brace because what I want this value to actually be is HTTP colon slash 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 localhost colon 3001 slash authors. So because I wanted the value of API URL to show up in there, we use the back ticks instead of singular double quotes. So API URL is uh, imported from up here. And if we look in that file, we can see it's 3001. So is this kind of like my layout thing where you're pulling and then pulling and then pulling from yeah. So Pulling if we console together. log out this template you are this uh template literal and we look, look at what's coming out there. Uh, okay, because we started with the const. Okay, okay. Ooh. Okay. Zach, go ahead. Okay. Um, go to um, your saying username isn't identified. So I don't know if I missed putting something into one of the other files, but I don't see any problems with my code in the server. You're missing a closing quote after the ID before the comma. Oh, that's why. Thank you. Add me some for a minute too. Okay. And we're working on the home page. So if you just delete admin from the URL, you are all caught up. Cool. Thanks. Six votes in, waiting for at least two more, if not three. Go back to sharing my screen, just in case that's helpful for you. Waiting for one more vote before we can move forward here. Um, you can do me. Waiting for one more yes vote before we move forward here. No offense. Unless you want to share screen, Nicole. I'm actually way too far behind to share screen. OK.
There are no stupid questions, just stupid errors. Please try to contain your, your tears, Christy. You enjoy that way too much. So I saw something and I'm glad I was muted because I burst out laughing. <laughs> I saw something else. So right now we should just be having our username pop up at other um, the blog title, right? You got it. All right. All right. We got that vote, that magic vote that I was waiting for. So rolling forward here. Okay, so we're back here. We've got my username showing up. Okay, what's next? Uh, don't we have to add another name? Because now we have, we can click on Max, but wouldn't the next person's name be a link and then we would click on their name? Great point, okay. So we have our create first user here, but we don't really want to let anyone create an account, right? We want to limit this to make sure that the only people who can create an account are the people that we, we want to have an account. So I'm actually going to follow the same thing. And instead of create first user, I'm going to create a second user. And that's an async function. And we're going to say, whoa, we're going to say, instead of checking to see if no users exist, check to see if the second user exists. And the way we're going to do that is instead of finding all, we're going to find one where the second user's username is, let's say, um, their username, uh, where their username is Testy Mick Testerson. Mm -mm. And if there is that second user, if there's not that second user, then go ahead and say user.create. Parentheses are not my friend tonight, apparently. Create a username called Testy Mick Testerson. And their password is going to be a hash sync because we still want to encrypt the password before we create the account. And they're not as cool as me. So their password is just secret. It's not super secret. <laughs> So we save that, but we can't forget we put all of this in a function because we needed it to be async, right? So we take our create second user, we come down here, we put the parentheses, we save. Now, of course, we could just go into the login screen and test this, but we're getting a step ahead of ourselves. Really, the right spot to test this to see if this create worked is to go to Beekeeper, connect to the default database, switch it over to the blog project, and look in our users table. And here is Testy McTesterson and their encrypted password. OK, it's kind of cool. Let's go back to our front end, and I'm going to refresh. And there's Max Testy McTesterson. Okay. So you should put a space after the author's name in the link tag. We sure can. So instead of just returning out this link, we can also, ooh, uh, we can put the whole thing in a span tag. Oops. And put a space after their name and then put the closing span tag. So we come here, and now Max and Testy McTesterson show up with a space in between them. Stopping there to poll. We 
created a second user in our backend code and we modified our span tag over here to make sure that there was a space showing up. And in order to get that space to show up, we added this span here. Um, and the end result should be that you can see both names showing up up here. Oh, one, one final thing I forgot to do. Because this key is now at not, is no longer at the top level. If you look at our front end, we've got this, each child in the list should have a unique key prop. We need to move that key from the link up to the span. Which of course then screwed up everything there. Uh, am I muted? Mm -mm. I'm not. Mm -mm. Um, I'm, in, I'm in a beekeeper and I don't see testy. Did it's you make good. sure that you called create second user down here? Where, where? Back Call. end, very bottom of the file. Create second user, yes. Okay, Have. check your terminal. Do you have any error messages going on down here? I have the same stuff you have, and it says connect this successfully. And you're scroll down to the bottom? Yep. yep In yep. Beekeeper, did you click this little refresh button down here? I did not. Where do... It says no data. Wait. Let me see. Um, actually, when I went to users... Are you in the right database, first of all? Do you have blog <laughs> up in the top? Yes. yes, it says blog, but I don't even see. You said go in users. And Is the public folder open? Yes, sessions, post, users. Okay, double click on users. Double click on users. Oh, I didn't double click. Okay, yeah, test these there. Okay. Um, And then it said... We're going to, oh my God. Okay. That's it, if you can see Testy, you're, oh, then you go to the front end and make sure that you've updated your authors so that there's a space after them. Wait a minute, they, wait, where's that? In the front end, we just modified this to have a span around everything. Okay, so that's, uh, so, I have too many windows. And do you know that I can't get my thing to work? Um, I did not know that you cannot get your thing to work. My, my. Uh, monitor? Yes. Don't give me bad juju. My portable I'm monitor is sitting on my juju. porch. I'm, afraid, I'm positive yours is going to work. Mine just doesn't. Okay, wait, let me, let me, let me not talk so I can get this right. Um, There's too many windows, I can't think. Okay, you said authors.
see the three of you that are voting no, but keep going. Make sure that you've got the understanding here because you're voting. Keep going does not mean you're off the hook. If you have any questions about this code, why we're doing it, how we figured out how to do it, what it's doing behind the scenes, those are all the important questions of understanding that you need to be striving for at this point in the program. So we're putting the link in the span. Why did we put the link in the span again? So the authors.map can only return one thing out. We had this link tag in here, but we wanted to put a space after the username. Well, we could put a space in the link, but we don't want to, that, that, that space to be linked. We want it outside of the link. So what I did is I put the whole thing in a span, and then that let me add this space outside of the link itself. Okay. Okay. Good question. You can only ever return one thing from the map. We can't return both the link and the space itself. We could take the easy way out and just put a space inside the link but then it's still gonna look like one big link. So what we did to solve for that is we put everything in a span here and then put the space character outside of the link itself. Everyone, just 30 more seconds. Any final questions before we move on? Oh, perfect. We just hit the threshold. Okay. Ma Go ahead, Chrissy. So mine doesn't have a space. Mine goes straight to Mac. That's not this number wrong. Do you okay. have this right here after the link? Hold on, let me see. I'm gonna come back to you. Do I have this thingy right here? I do not. So that will help. Okay, wait a second. Okay, we are moving forward because we've got nine minutes before break. So I'm in my, not sharing my, my okay, we're in my front end, I refresh. We have the name showing up. We've got no errors going on here. What do we do next? We click on Tessie McTesterson and we log in. No. Well, I clicked on oh, testy. That's the right answer. We should be able to click on an author, but what do we do now? We got to set up the author's page. We got to set up the author's page. So we come in, we go to our files, we create a new file, um, and we call it author.js. And we go about getting our practice of setting up a new author. And we just return a div. That div is going to have an H1 that says author. We export our default author. Then what? What do we do once we've got our author set up? Want to import it? We want to okay. import it where? Home page. Home page. Mm, try again. App.js. App.js. App we certainly do. So we're going to import our author from our author file. And let me pull this up. I was trying to get it to go to the bottom half. There we go. So you can see it all on the same screen. And now that we've got the author imported, what do we need to do? We got it. Don't we have to add them to the route? No. Yep. We add a route. 
with a path going to the author and the element is our author. Uh, I have a question, but I'm not sure if you did it already. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so is there something we have to do to like connect it to the database? Mm. Or we did that already. There's some foreshadowing going on there. No, we will need to do that. Um, but we will, that is probably two steps away. Oh, okay. Got it. But we definitely do need to do that. You're not, you're not wrong there. Okay. So I created my author, my author file. I made it a component. I exported the component. I went to my app.js. I imported my author. I created a route for my author and I linked it to the author element. I go back to my home, my code. Oh, authors. And there's my author showing up. <laughs> now what? Um, could we pass a parameter with the mm. author link, the two? Oh, I like the way you're thinking. Yeah, when we end up on the author page, we need to know what author we're looking at. So if we go back to our home page, we're linking to the authors page, but we don't want to link to all of the authors. We want to link to a specific author. The ID. The author slash their author dot ID. Now, if we go back to the home page and we click on Max, I get to author one. Author ID one is what we want, but it's broken now because we need to go tell our route in our, in our app.js, hey, we don't want to go to the author's page. We want to go to the author page where an ID is passed in. Well, how does it know ID is not just part of the route? We put the semicolon in front of, I'm sorry, the colon in front of it. So it knows, oh, the number one is going to get passed in there or whatever one we actually want. So we go back here and we look in our browser and now we're back on the author page. There's one last step I want to do before we pull again and go on break. How do I get that number? How do I get access to that number in my author component here? You got to do it with params. I got to do it with params. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to say import use params from my React router DOM. Then up here, I'm going to say my params are coming in from my use params. And if I console log out the params.id, I can see one here. And if I go back to the home page and click on testy, now I get two. And if I go I back, I can see two. What? Why is there two numbers down? Um, that is kind of a loaded question. That's because in the development environment, the component runs twice. The first time it runs, it checks it for any errors to see if it's going to break. The second time it actually shows up. So when you see it twice, don't panic. That will only happen in your development code when you build the code and ship it out. That's when it will only show up once. Doug actually asked that question in a one-on-one -on -one two weeks ago, and I did not know the answer to it. So that is something that I learned because of one of your questions. Um, so it runs twice only because we're in development. The first time it runs, it's checking to see if anything breaks. The second time, it actually makes it show up. Okay, one more question. Can you just define params again for me? Yeah, params are the parameters passed as part of the route. So we've we the first time we ran into parameters was actually talking about functions, right? Whenever whatever was in between those parentheses were the parameters or the input of that function getting passed in. But parameters are you not are not unique to JavaScript. We also use parameters in other ways, but parameters are basically the context of the function. What are we passing in so this function can work properly? 
So what we're doing here is instead of saying, hey, we're passing some data in, but instead of it getting passed into a function, it's getting passed in as part of the route. So this is a route parameter. And the way we get that route parameter out is by importing use params from the router, telling the router, hey, there's a parameter as part of that path, which is what this colon is telling the router. And then in the component itself, we can get access to the yeah. route parameter using params and console log it out. So this okay. params ID here is actually following all the way through the database authors. We're adding that author ID in as part of the link. On our homepage, we can actually look at that link and see, hey, Max is author ID one, and Tessie McTesterson is author ID number two. So now when we click on that link, it goes back to the router, says, oh, you want to go to the author page with their whatever their ID is. And then in the author component itself, we console log out the params.id so that we got access to it in there. Thank you. We'll push break off by a couple minutes, let people cut off, catch up, answer any questions, and then we will go on break. Max, could we have, instead of making an author page and going to it, could we have just stayed in home and like set an author state and then filtered which we sure could have. And I debated going back and forth which one was better for tonight. Um, so if there is, if time allows at the end of class, we'll duplicate the code and go through a set state filter instead of going through a separate authors page. The Thank line you. of delineation there is if you're only doing a filter, it would probably make more sense to keep it all on the same page. However, if the author page maybe had like an about the author and had a different layout than what just the home page would have. That's when it would make sense to make it its own component and do all of that work. Larry, do you. you want to share your screen? Yep. Go for it. So it's not printing out the numbers of the click on your author. Oh, uh, where did my cursor go? Monitor five or six? Three. <laughs> OK, so mm -hmm. now you're linking to the authors page. But on the um, home.js, we updated our link to include the author ID. OK. So if you look in home.js, when we link over, when we map over all the authors, you'll see we modified that link to a little bit to include the author ID. All right, I see it. All right, I see it. Thank you. Yep. And then just make sure your app.js is updated with the route as well, and then you should be fully caught up. Uh. 
Okay. Last call for questions. Okay. We are going to go on break. We will be back at 7.30, giving you a whole extra five minutes tonight. Don't get used to it. We'll mm. see you back here at 7.30. Larry, I see a hand raised. Happy to kick off with the answer for you. I don't know. I was <clears throat> trying to um, print my thanks to the council, but it put it like under info instead of writing the council. So that was something weird. Oh, let's see, sure. Quick question. Am I all caught up after Larry? Um, if you just change it back to five messages over here on the left, that should get you back to your normal like console screen. It is, I guess, normal for it to show up there. Um, but that's kind of your your normal view there. Okay, I don't know where the hell I was at then because I wasn't seeing anything other than the error that was up there. All right, thank you. Yeah, you've got the React Dev tools installed. And so that's why they're also showing up there. Um, but this is like your normal console that you're you're used to seeing here. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, Wayne, you are caught up when you have the author's first name or the author's username showing up on the homepage and you can click on either one of them. So you're caught up when you can click on Max and see their ID come out in the console down here. And if you need help, let me know. And of course we can catch you up. So if their name doesn't come in the console, then you're not caught up. It's not that their name shows up in the console. It's that their ID shows up in the console. Oh, wait a minute, let me see. Mm -hmm. After Wayne, and then I have a question. All right, Nicole's actually next, and then okay. Wayne, I'll come to you if you have a question, and then I'll come back to Christy. Okay. Nicole, go ahead. In the home JS, um, where it says post.map, and then on yours it says authors.map, am I supposed to like duplicate that section because there is a post.map under it? Like, or am I making an additional one? So there's a posts.map, and then there's also, also an authors.map. Okay, thanks. Wayne, are you caught up or do you need help? Okay, oh, dope. Uh, Christy, coming to you. Okay, hold on. No, no, let me share. Oh, I thought I was talking. Okay, 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 go ahead. Thank you. Um, so my error message is this. You have a use day is not a function. Oh, use day and, um, um, mm, mm, mm. Mm. See, it's all it takes for you to solve errors now is for me to go, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, now you're missing your author. So if you go back to your home, um, you're doing the all the work to get the authors here. You just need to scroll down and make sure you have this section over here which you do. Um, so now I'm confused and taking remote control. Let me see where you're at. Um, oh, one problem may be that you don't have the username. You had a user name. And there you go. 
And if you click on one, it takes you to their page. And if you scroll down, you can see their ID right here. So you are all caught up. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Larry, coming to you and then back to Christy. I think it was Christy first. Imagine. Christy, coming to you next. Go ahead. Okay, there was a there's a warning, and you got the same warning. It says line twenty one five, uh, React hook use effect has a missing dependency params ID. Yeah. So what's going on there is that we're using um, post editor in the post editor file on line twenty one. It's saying, hey you're using params ID here. And whenever we use a variable that is external to the use effect, the use effect wants it listed here because basically they're saying, if that params ID changes, we need to go run this fetch request again. So the simple solve for that is just putting params ID into this array. And by doing that, what you're saying is if the params ID ever changes, go ahead and rerun all of the code and the get uh, get post function. So okay. that's a, a quick fix. It, it, React does not break if you don't do that, but React is trying to tell you, hey, you're using an external variable here. Because of that, you really should list it in the dependencies array for this um, use effect. Okay. And then Zach pointed out that uh, Wayne still has a use stay AE at, um, in his imports. Wayne, note for you to fix. You've got a use state spelled wrong in your imports. Thank you. Christy, you're up. Okay, share screen. In home JS? I'm not sure. I didn't catch it. The same screen. Uh, you were on with Max before, so I think home.js, yeah. Okay, Christy, when you don't have a route matching, where are your routes defined? In uh, app mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, Don't forget to remove your S S as well. So the way I think about plural is, are we showing multiple authors on this page or are we showing a singular author on this page? We're showing just one, so it shouldn't have a slash or an S. Um, you can ignore those for now. Go to your back to your browser and refresh. And now we've got a problem. Look at what your URL is. It still has that S in it. So let's go back to your homepage code. And you've got an S in there. Yep. So take that out. Save, head back to your browser. <laughs> go back to the home page. No. Um, no, just go back to the home page. No, no, no. In your browser. Oh. Just hit the back button. Okay. Now when you click on Max. You get to your author page and you are all caught up. No, it says it again. Refresh. Those were old warnings. Where's the one? Oh, you go back, go to your author uh, yeah. in your code, in your front end. Uh, Author.js. You you did your use params. You're missing the console log. Oh, okay. So you did that. all the work and then just missed the console log. Okay. All okay. Right. Yeah. So we're diving back in here. We've got our author page. And now in our author page, we've got the params ID. 
someone other than Doug, Christy, or Larry, what do we do next? Ask the question again, I'm sorry. So we're on our author page. The whole idea, the whole point of getting to this author page was that we can show the post just for this author. So now that we're on here, what do we do? <laughs> we've done the work, we've got the author ID. How do we get that author's post? Do we to have to up? add a username in so we can see the username on the author page? We've got their ID. So their ID is enough to go get their specific posts. How do we go about getting them? Oh, well, maybe that'll pull the post into author. Yep. And we do that by doing what? Is it login? Get posts. Oh, get know. posts. What do we put our get posts in? Import. Do we import the post? I don't know. I don't know. Close. Don't, we, don't we need a link like the things like a login like put where we put in People or get posts username and the password? Nope, because anyone can see our posts. The idea here is anyone can read a blog, right? When you go to my blog, you don't have to log in. So we don't need the login for all of this. The idea is that we're just filtering the posts down to the author who who wrote it. We need a use effect. Uh, we need a use effect. There we go. The use effect is saying, hey, when this page first loads, we would like you to go get the params ID. So whenever the author's ID changes in the URL, we want to const get the posts. But a dumb programmer would go write all of this out again. A smart programmer would say, hold on, we already have most of this written out in our home JS. What happens if we just copy that code and paste it in to our author JS? Oh, wait a minute. But we don't want to just get all the posts. We want to get the post by a specific author. And we don't want to just get all the posts by a specific author. We want to get all the posts by a specific author ID. Okay. Now I, I save and immediately I've got two problems in my console. It doesn't know what API URL is and it doesn't know what set posts are. So we can fix the first one by saying import API URL from my API URL. Then we need to say up here, in addition to just our params, we're going to have our posts and our set posts. And that is going to use state and it's going to start out as an empty array. Okay, now we've done all of that work, but we need to do <laughs> one more thing. Oh, use state is not defined. We need to import use state. Okay. Now we're back to a somewhat functional state, but we created this new thing. And you know what? Instead of getting the posts by the author, let's just pass the author ID directly. So we're going to say, hey, go to the database. I'm going to give you the author ID, and I would like all of the posts done by that author. So we come back to the database, and we say server. Go get, when we pass in an author and the author ID, do an async rec res, and res.send back all the posts where the post does a find all and gets the author ID. And I'm going to go to that post model and make sure hey, look, we're already storing the author ID here. So if we go to the server, we say where the author ID is equal to what? Where the author ID. Rec.params.id. We want to pull out their ID from the path right here. So I save that. I come back over to here. 
I look at my browser and we get a bunch of ones printing out and nothing else. What's the last step we need to do here? We need to render the posts. We need to render the posts. And a smart person would say we are already rendering the posts down here. So let's take this whole thing, drop it in, and now here are my posts. Wait, 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 wait. Are one of those posts from Max? Are they both from Max? Only these posts are from Max. So if we go to Tessie McTesterson, there aren't any posts there. Well, we so should- You can log in through him to make the post. But okay. before we do that and test, maybe we come in here and say, hey, if the posts.length is equal to zero, then say user has not created any posts yet. Otherwise, show all of the posts. Okay. Now we come over here, user has not created any posts yet, but if we go back and pull up Max, here are my posts. Okay, let's do the final step here. I'm gonna log in and sign in with Testy McTesterson. I'm gonna type in his secret password. I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna click new posts and I'm gonna say Testy McTesterson. First post. I post it. I log out. And if I go to the home page, here's Testy McTesterson's post. And if I click on his username, I get only his posts or her posts or their posts. <laughs> but if I click on Max, I get only my posts. <laughs> <coughs> Could you show again what we should be seeing in admin when you first log in? When you log into admin, you'll see all of the posts. Okay. So it doesn't matter if I made the post or Testy made the post, it's the general administrator. So anyone can see um, posts and edit them, which is pretty common. Like if you think about WordPress, when you sign into WordPress, you can not only see just your blog posts, you can also see the posts that other people have created. Um, so when you sign in here, you'll see all of the posts, not okay. just your own. Thank you. Although you could modify that if you wanted to and make it so you can only modify posts that you've created. Okay. Stopping, polling. So let's do a, a quick run through. We went to our app.js. We created a new route for our, our author ID. We created a new page for author. In our author, we used the use effect and we went to the author endpoint and got the params by their ID. Now that we've got their ID, we go to the back end and we say, hey, go find all the posts where the author ID is whatever ID gets passed in here. Then that comes back to the front end. It sets the posts into state. State comes down here and goes, oh, that's part of the return. Our return is now modified to check the post's length. If the length is zero, we haven't created any posts yet. So send back the user has not created any posts. Otherwise, go to the else part of the inline ternary operator. That's our question mark colon syntax and show all of the posts by looping over them.
Sorry, there's no way I can keep all that on the screen. Hopefully you're in the live share. Anyone have questions? Anyone need help? Only got one more concept we're going to cover tonight. And I am going to indulge in 
uh, Doug's question about the alternate way of doing this with state, and then we'll open it up for capstone questions or homework questions. What are you going to catch me up for the poop? Depends how far behind you are, but go ahead, share the screen. Let's take a look. Well, I'm just, I'm working on the code right here. I'm probably missing something. Go ahead, share the screen. Oh, you can't see it? One second. There you go. Um, you're missing a closing parenthesis on 16. You got to pay attention to where your squigglies are. Okay, and then you've got a use state is not defined in author JS. That's an import issue. Oh, you already have an import though from React, so you can add it right up here. And you're caught up on, at least on the code that I've seen. Yeah, I gotta figure out the login. So. Okay, we're gonna go forward on our last concept uh, tonight, and then we will show an alternative way of doing this. Okay, so what I would like to do, the final thing, we got our, um, our posts working. I would like to show the author on each one of my posts on the homepage. So I wanna say, you know, another post by Max and then the post content. But the problem is if we go back to our home screen and do a console log on our posts, we are able to see in each one of our posts, it just has an author ID. I don't want the author ID to show up. I want the username to show up. But it's a bad idea in our model to store the user name in here because what happens if the username changes? Well, then we would have to go update every single post to have the person's new username. So we use author ID instead, but wouldn't it be nice if we could tell the database to include the author or the user's information when we query for the post? In order to be able to do that, we need to tell our database that the user and the post are related. So the way that we pull that off is we come down here and after we've connected to the database, what we're going to do is we're going to say the post belongs to a user. And the way that we link the post to the user is we say the foreign key that links those two together is the, uh, is the author ID. So we save that. This is telling the database, hey, the post has a user that it belongs to. And the way those two link together is using the author ID. We then in our server JS, when we get all of our posts, we tell it we not only want to order it, we would like to include 
the user information associated with it. Now, when we come over here and refresh the page and take a look at our post, take a look at what's going on here. We not only have our author ID, we also have this user associated with it. And when we pop open that user, oh crap, our password's being sent out again. So we got to fix that. We've got to say, hey, include the model called user, but also only include the attributes. And all we really care about is their username. So we say, hey, include this model called user, but all we care about including is the username. So I come over here, I refresh, I pop this open, and now look at what I have in here. The user has the username that we care about. Okay, that was really cool because what we're doing here is a join on the database. If we go over to the beekeeper level, we're saying don't only get the posts, but take the author ID and do a left join to join the author ID in the database with the user ID over here. The way we tell the database to do that is in our VS code in db.js, we tell it, hey, the post, the model post, belongs to the model or the table user. And the way that those two keys are linked together is the author ID. We can then say in our server JS, when we get the posts, include the user, but the only thing that we need from that user's table is the username. So now in our front end, we didn't really have to modify anything, but we can see each one of our posts has a user username. So all we need to do is go into our posts.map. And in addition to having the H5 and the P, let's add an H6. And we can say post by, and we can say post.user.username. So I save, I come over here, I scroll down, post by Testy McTesterson, post by Max, post by Max. Relaunching the poll there. <coughs> Larry, go ahead. Log this up. Um, author twenty in your go to your author, uh, in your front end. Yep. And your scroll up to your set state or use state. Um, post, 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 length, data dot posts. Oh, okay. You get Thank back multiple posts. Yeah. All right. Let's see, refresh. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. No problem. I have an error. Did you try to solve for the error before you screen share with me? So let, let me ask you this. So it says react-dom.development.js colon 80. Does that mean that it's on line 80 of there is no share your screen. Okay. Oh, refresh. <laughs> no, first of all, you're in your post editor. Did you mean to be in your post editor? I don't know. No. Okay. So then just take all this off. Yeah. Just to go to your home page. I think the problem is with your post editor, and that's why you're getting some weird stuff going on. Okay, so you're all caught up. Oh. You've got a problem in your post editor that you can you may want to solve by logging in and figuring out what those errors are. Do I log in with Max or Testy? Either. Okay. I've got Testy. Okay, and then when you click on new posts, I think that's when you're gonna get all of your errors. Yeah, so scroll up to the very top. The top errors are usually the most helpful. Mm -hmm. And it says warning. Okay, that's just a warning though. So we can ignore that, keep going down. Keep going down, because that's just another warning. The above error, com okay, browser router, keep going. Text area can only have at most one child. All right, let's go look in your post editor code. Something's going on in there. Mm. And is your back end running? Do you have any errors in there? Um. I don't see any. Uh, just a warning about not using where somewhere that you're supposed to be. Um, okay, uh, let's look at your post editor code. Ah. Uh, no. uh, let me just remote control. Okay, you caught up. Um, use the use the that set post brand ID if it's not equal to new brand post editor ID if it's new <laughs> oh, no that should cause a problem new on change This is all supposed to be in here. Oh, in here. And you've got a duplicate class name. So you didn't have the ending tag here. So all of this was trying to show up in your text area as opposed to properties on the text area. Yeah, and the warning thing was saying text area, but I was like, I, I don't remember. Okay. So cool. if you go back and refresh, now you've got your new post and no errors. Okay, thank you. All right, talk to me. Only three people are caught up. Does anyone need help? Uh, Zach, I'm seeing your message. Should we fix it yet so that when we click an author, it gives their name at the top of the page? No, we didn't. I can show that quickly. This is optional. You do not have to follow along with this. Um, but in order to do that, we're going to run into a problem of similar to what we ran into with the homepage. If we click on it, 
it doesn't, um, the post itself won't contain the author. So we could take the same approach and say, hey, when we get the author by their ID, include the author on each post. But that's a little overkill, right? Because every post is going to have the same author on that page. So the better solution is to say something like username is going to await the user dot find by PK mm -hmm. and uh, do that by the rec dot params dot ID. And then also only include the attributes of their username because we don't want their password to get sent back. So once we add the username into the author ID endpoint, we can go back to our front end code, look at the author page. And if we console log out our data here, what we're going to see when we go to the author page is that we included username and the username is Max. So we can say, let's add another thing called username and set username. It's going to use state. It's going to start out as an empty string. And then once we get the data, we can set the username to the data dot user. I mean, rename this. I should say user, not username user.username. And then down here, we can say uh, author colon username. And when we look over, we've got author maps. So we modified our endpoint to send back the user information. We query the database by the ID coming in. We include just their username. We send all of that data back as part of the user. And then in the front end, we set up a state to hold our username. We uh, know that data includes our user. And we just set the username in from our data. And then we add our username here. Nicole, next time we're in person, remind me uh, to take a look at your polls and figure out why you're not getting them. I will be in person tomorrow and on Thursday. Office hours will be fully virtual on Sunday at 5. OK. One final poll coming your way. We can either end class here and open it to any questions you have about Capstone or homework or about tonight's class. Or Doug had another alternative way of approaching the uh, uh, author page without having to do a bunch of routing. So I can do a quick example on that if you guys are interested, or we can just open it up to questions. Doug, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> I'm getting a bunch of errors. And go ahead, share a screen. Let's take a look at it. Oh, uh, it's not letting me. Oh, sorry, my bad. Go for it. Uh, so error connection refused means your back end has probably crashed. Yep, which I got it going again. But then as soon as I save this, okay, maybe I. Maybe you have to refresh in there. Yeah. Okay, now let's go back to your back end and scroll up in your terminal. Let's see what's going wrong. Um. 
Okay, so it's saying there's something with user dot username that it doesn't like. Um, keep going up. Column user dot username does not exist. Missing column. Interesting. Let me see your. I don't see any problems there. Let me see your db.js. Post belongs to user via the author ID. No problem there. Let me see your user model. Oh, well, you certainly have a username in there. Okay, so there was, there was like an extra bracket where I just saw something where it said username, and inside of the quotes there seemed to be a single bracket. I could be it could be how it's supposed to be, but maybe mm -hmm. on the right side on the code on the right side wherever it said username. Unless I don't. Oh, did you just switch? Go, go I, back to, uh, on this one. That looks no, right. That, the one before that was this. And does it is there something that says username and quotes in red on oh, that side? Everything looks uh, fine before there. That, so. We were right here. That one right above where your court cursor is. That one. Oh, that one. Uh, good catch. Thank you. Oh my goodness. You're I was welcome. My hair out. <laughs> good eye. Very good catch. Thank you. Well, uh, Larry, go ahead. Okay, failed to fetch is issue with the back end. So let's head there first. Uh, user is not associated to post, which means you missed a line in your db.js that says post belongs to user. So okay. if you switch over to your db file. We added a line right around 19 or 20 that tied the post to the user. All right, thank you. Wayne, go ahead. I think I'm missing a lot. There's just so much. I don't think you're missing that much. Um, uh, post on app post line 26. So you got to go up to 26. 20. Oh, is that in that's an author? So you go. Um, post. it should just be post up there, not post ID, post.id. There you go. Save. Okay, see, wasn't that much. Okay. I'll um, add the rest. MDB. You need that same line that Larry had to add. That post belongs to on twenty one. Oh, oh, nope. Eighteen after eighteen, it goes. Careful of what your auto completes putting in. I even press enter. <laughs> Funny. Belongs to. I'm going to move on, Wayne, if you need help, just raise your hand again. 
Yeah, I should be okay. Zach, oh, never mind on Zach. Um, I just put it down preemptively. Oh, okay, um, go ahead. So I keep getting this error message, um, undefined username on line 15 of author.js. I don't see any problems in author.js. Okay, so could very well be in your back end. Let's take a look at that. Um, you were, um, nope, you're not missing that. Uh, attributes user. Uh, I changed my username to just say user right here. I changed that to just say user because I realized I'm sending back like the whole user object, not just the username. Oh, okay. Cool. And then, yeah, you're caught up. Sweet. Thank you. No problem. Plug in your laptop. Low batteries yeah. cause me anxiety, even when they're not my own. Nicole, go ahead. I, I still can't get mine to log in. Okay. Did you go to Beekeeper and look at Beekeeper at the users table to figure out what the users are? To go to the users table. Okay, so your your username is Nicole with a capital N. Oh, it's not the one that's in the code? No, it's whatever's in the database. The database is the ultimate source of truth. Okay. So the code only creates that username if there are not any other users existing. So it only creates the one that's in the code if there aren't any other users. That's the thing. I made another... No. I made another one. Yep. And that was also in the database called tester. And that you could have signed in with as well. Okay. Larry, okay. go ahead. Um, uh, oh, you probably have the same problem. I changed my backend code. Uh, go to your backend to that endpoint. And I changed, uh, in server.js, I changed, uh, scroll down to the author endpoint. Uh, ah, here you go. You're missing the user line here. The That right there. Yeah, you got it. Stephanie, go ahead. So what's it supposed to look like in our uh, in our browser? Because I don't know if I'm caught up or. Uh... Yep. So if you go to your homepage, you should see everyone's posts, including post by and the author's name. Okay. So as the... long as it says the post by. That yeah, that yeah. was the very last thing that we did. Cool. Okay. And then if you click on uh, the user, if you click on. Any of the users, it should say author colon and then their author name in here. Um, when I do the testy one, it, it says users not created any posts. Okay, that's fine. Okay. If you if you hit if you scroll down and go to the login and log in with testy, you would be able to create a post for them, but you don't need to uh, do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sounds like you're all caught up though. So you're in good shape. Thank you. Nicole, go ahead. I noticed that I don't have like my name and then tester next to my name on my page. Is it, do I have to do a slash to authors? Um, you would have to I'm click not. on the author's username to get there. Okay. Um, one second. Mm -hmm. 
All right, can I, ha can I have your help, please? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so go back to local 3000, 3001 is your, your API. Okay, go to 3002, where, where is your... Okay, so you need to go back to your code and restart the server. So I just did that and it's still doing that. Okay, so I would go stop your capstone from running because your capstone running is causing problems. Okay, now go back to the blog front end. Control C out of that server and restart it now that you've got your capstone stopped. Okay, now you're caught up there. Okay, so you okay. got you've got something missing in your author page that is causing your posts not to show up. Before you do that, though, go to Beekeeper. Or I want to confirm something. Go to your post table. Okay, so your author IDs are all in here. That's good. So something's missing in your, uh, either your author page or your author endpoint that are causing the posts not to come back. So scroll up. Uh, we changed this to not include the word posts. So it just goes directly to the author. So save that and then go back to your browser and see what shows up. So click on Nicole. Okay, so we still have, we still have some issues going on there. She has empty posts in her database. If you look at her yeah, database. Can I just Two of the, oh. two of the uh, columns say empty, empty. Because I didn't post anything. I just pressed post and then like that. So, so delete them? No, so so the problem isn't the empty titles. The problem is, is that there are posts by the author that are not showing up. So let's let's go, let's not just click around. Let's go back to the home screen. Like my home code or the, the login the, screen? The, the home screen on your app, the home page. So delete slash admin from the URL. Click on Nicole. And we know Nicole has made posts. It's in the database. So let's go to your backend code and look at the author endpoint. Okay, and the problem is, is that you have author's ID, but we're only getting back a single author. So save that. Go back to your front end and refresh. And there you go. You're caught up. Okay. Well, how do I get from here? I'll just go back. Just the mm -hmm. back one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Any final questions? Me. <laughs> Go ahead, Wayne. Sharing in one second. You guys are welcome to head out of here if you have your code working and don't have questions. However, I am going to go through um, Doug's question of how do we do this without having to use routing. So if you're interested in that, I will do a quick run through on that. If your brain is fried and you would like to be out of React code, you are welcome to sign out. Um, all right, where are you at, Wayne? Um, so it's not logging up. Okay. So can you make a new post first of all? Not with the add 
the other um, user. I'll, I'll log into it. Yes. Tesla model. Okay, check your back end. I bet your back end server is not working. Okay. Yep, there you go. So it crashed. So scroll up. Let's figure out why it crashed. Okay. Um, some promise, SQLize, keep going down. SQLize database error. Invalid input syntax for type integer new. So the problem is in your new post, you have something missing in your front end code that is not handling the new ID properly. In so, the front end? Yeah, let me just request. And is your front end back here? It's right here. Okay. So let me... Oh, here, um, host editor, get post, host if the thing is new, post it, otherwise patch it um, in your app.js. You do have the ID in properly. So we're saying um, if it is a new one, post it, otherwise patch it. Um, include the params ID. Okay, so um, in your patch, find all of that's fine. In your post, create. Okay, all of that's fine too. Um, so let's just restart your server. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay, now go to your home page. Okay, now all of your posts are back. Now you can try and create a new post. Okay, and stop. Now we've got issues. So we need to go into inspect, look in the console, and the console is what talent is telling us failed to fetch post editor 27. So we know the issue has to be with our post, create a new one. And what it's saying when we post. here um, an error database error from promise um It doesn't like it's trying to, when it creates a new post, it's literally using the ID new somewhere. Do you have, where do you post? Get post ID patch. I wonder, is my post ID in another spot? Um, no, because you're doing a specific post. Trying to pass an ID in somewhere or of the word new that it really shouldn't be. Um, hmm. Get, oh, that's mine. Um, post editor, params ID. 
Um, let's just do this. <laughs> Okay, it's doing that right. So you say go here, go to the post, use a post method. So then we go to your backend. Oh, God, I don't know what I just did. Just move you something. The back end? I need to move. No, I'm I'm good. Sorry, I just moved something. Um, post auth required rec session user ID send post. So is it not hitting that? Um, you reopen your. Connected successfully. We hit post. And now it's just suddenly working. I think you didn't have a file saved. I think your server.js wasn't saved and that was causing all the issues. So if we go over here, now all of a sudden your posts are going to be working. And if you go here, they're going to show up. So I think you literally didn't have your server JS saved and that was causing issues. And if, and what should I see ultimately if I log out? I should see both posts. Yeah, yes. Sorry. On home, not login, just home. No, nope, that's not. Doug and Chaz, I know you're interested in that other way. I'm actually going to record that and I'll post it in the CIC student C3 channel um, of how we would do it using um, state and effect instead. I just don't want to keep everyone on tonight. So okay. it's, a, it's supposed to be um, home, right? Like slash home. So it's supposed to look like this. If you're in here, you can see post by the author's name. And if you click on the author's name, you can see author and their name and only the post that they created. Not seeing that. Okay. You got you got some catch up to do then. Okay. Any other questions before we head out here? Or already? 10 minutes over. <laughs> Wayne, if you need additional help, you can always schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me or um, shoot me a message and we can find a time that works for you. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Have a good one. See you guys.